Yes, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome. This is Team On Location. This is our trailer episode. So if you're interested in what we're doing, what it is that we're talking about, uh, that's the goal of what we're going to cover today. First of all, there's three of us involved, and we're going to do a little bit of an introduction to each of us. So right now, my name is Ryan O'Donnell, Ryan O, and is what I go by for short. And basically got really interested in behavioral science, started finding all these internet videos and started wondering why cat videos went so viral and vlogging and all these other trends that you see when there's such great stories and outcomes in behavior, uh, behavioral science. And so I've been trying to figure out how to mesh those together. And this project is one of those coming togethers of those. So that's me. How about Sarah? You're up. Hey, what's up? I'm Sarah Troutman. I have been in the field of behavior analysis for over 20 years, and I've spent most of my career uh, running a behavior analytic organization out of the Bay Area. But in the last year, I decided to pivot after selling my business, and I really wanted to indulge in some more creative projects. And like Ryan, I wondered why it is that, you know, so many cat videos, and for me, French bulldog videos, uh, go viral. And, and can we get a kind of, you know, audience and, and an appetite for what we're doing in the field of behavior analysis? And I got to know Ryan. You know what I was just realizing yesterday? Right. The first experience I ever had with you was when you came to the Calaba conference in Santa Clara. I think it was... 2018 and I remember that you were just like holding a camera and doing all these like weird b-roll shots outside of the Hyatt Regency and I th remember thinking to myself who is this weirdo this guy is so odd and why is he filming plants um I remember that I remember that exact situation. like so I remember, much judgment I have the clips too we can go back and relive this if we want so much judgment um but you know you and I collaborated on doing all of these great Calaba conference videos last year and out of that was kind of born this, you know, friendship and, and kinship. And I think we have a really similar, you know, creative vision for what we believe that we can do in terms of dissemination, both inside and outside of behavior analysis by using and leveraging social media and video and podcasting, which is such a powerful medium. So putting this project together was just like a natural kind of output and progression of that relationship. And it's also just been like deeply satisfying. So I'm pretty stoked to be here. I've also had about five cappuccinos. <laughs> yeah, so which just, is typical. <laughs> I'm just like riding that caffeine wave. <laughs> All right. And uh, so what we're alluding to is we're working on this project that is uh, video based, I would say primarily. And part of that is uh, slowly building up a team of other folks that are interested in film as well. Mm -hmm. So a couple years ago, I met a gentleman named Jarek. He was hired to film at an event that I was invited to uh, hang out at. I was not cool enough because I was still filming plants and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> to actually be hired to do it. But he was the the videographer for that. So we met. Uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself, though. Okay. Well, my name is Jarek Image. And yes, you heard that right. My last name is Image. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a photographer, videographer. I just I just do a bunch of things. So like, it's kind of hard to explain what I really do. Content creator. I'm yep. just going to name myself that. But yeah, I mean, I met you, what, two years ago? Yeah, pushing three now. We're like on the two and a half, three year mark. Yeah. I mean, um, so some of you may have met him at different behavioral events. He's come out and joined us at a few of them, helped me out on some of the shoots and whatnot. Um, Mostly mm -hmm. we refer to him as like the creepy guy in the back. <laughs> is, is Jarek with the camera? I'm mm -hmm. just in charge of making things look pretty. So yes. uh, <laughs> you should be nice to me, Sarah. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm always nice to you and deeply grateful. <laughs> deeply grateful. <laughs> All right. So what we've been, uh, now we have to, I guess, talk a little bit about like what this team on location is. Do you want to mm -hmm. take that? Yes. So when Ryan first filmed this, you know, snippet with Pat Fryman last year at the, the Calaba conference, um, and what did you title it? I didn't know her circumstances. Was that what? Yeah, I didn't know her circumstances. I didn't know her circumstances. I don't think at the time that either, you know, you or, or myself or Pat understood that the kind of impact that that would really have, uh, mm -hmm. within our field and how much it would really resonate to people. And it was insane. Isn't it your most shared piece to date? Yeah, yeah. No, it's up there as number one still reigning after the last year. And and this is also on the heels of me going to Boys Town for the first time in August 2018. I went with a group of my colleagues from L.A. and we just had this transformative experience. It was such an amazing place to be. It was so 
uh, incredible to look at the type of work and the outcomes that they are achieving at Boys Town using the family teaching model. Um, and that really Father Flanagan was honestly a visionary um, before even B.F. Skinner in terms of his view on problem behavior and how it can be effectively treated. And Pat Fryman has become a friend. He's a, a mentor. Uh, he's one of my my favorite people. And so, you know, Ryan and I just kind of started ruminating, you know, last spring and then the summer, like, gosh, wouldn't it be neat if we did kind of a longer form piece and we don't know exactly what that would be, uh, where we could take a deeper dive into Pat's work. He's written and authored over 192 research articles and journal articles in our field and outside of our field uh, to bring some, you know, more understanding and, um, you know, kind of attention to Boys Town because there's been a bunch of movies that have been done on Boys Town in the past, but really kind of nothing that's really brought it into the modern age. And, and really for us to just like be able to, you know, share both inside behavior analysis and outside of behavior analysis, the power of what we do in a way that is, uh, galvanizing people into to want to lean into us more and really um, is focused on the fact that uh, at the end of the day, we're here about, we care about people and we want to do things that help people live better lives. And so how can we express that? And we felt like Boys Town was like the perfect place to do this. Yeah. So when that came together, um, I remember reaching out to Jarek and I was like, hey, you've, you've, we've talked about we wanted to maybe make something that's a documentary style film. Uh, and he's like, what's the idea? And it was basically me condensing that pitch with a big, big asterisk of like, I don't know what we're getting into. <laughs> Are you ready to sign up for this? Um, so on locations, I would say essence is that we're, we're trying to make people feel like they are on site with these people next to them, learning about whatever topic it is that we're talking about. And this first one, um, maybe we can describe a little bit, um, is like Boys Town, Nebraska, but mm -hmm. Boys Town is also a, not only this village of where everything's set, but there's also national chapters, right? Yes. Or there's, can you describe that a little bit? Yeah. So you know the primary campus of Boys Town is, and I think sometimes people don't realize it, it's called Boys Town because it actually has its own zip code. Is it, it is its own separate entity in Nebraska. And so the Boys Town campus and city of Boys Town in Nebraska is the the primary kind of nucleus of all of the, the programs, but they have other programs in other parts of the country. Um, but the the Nebraska location is where most of the, the primary work is done and where the highest pr volume of, I don't want to say patients, what it, resi residents. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so what's fascinating about Boys Town is, and you'll see this when you have a chance to, to watch the documentary with Pat, is it's a residential care facility um, that's part of what they do. But all of the residents there all live in regular houses. So you go to the Boys Town campus and you're thinking, oh, okay, there's going to be some kind of like dormitories. It's going to maybe feel kind of like austere and sterile, maybe kind of cold. No, it's just like driving around a neighborhood and there's kids walking around playing basketball and going to football practice or going to school or, or hanging out. Um, and this is all based off the family teaching model, which was pioneered by Mont Wolf, who obviously we know is, you know, a huge uh, figure in behavior analysis and was one of Pat's grad school advisors at, at university. Um, of Kansas. And so Boys Town has done, a, I think, a tremendous job of being able to be this like great research facility in Nebraska, really being able to truly change the lives of the residents that are there, but also have a, a much broader kind of dissemination goal in order to really show the efficacy of this family teaching model throughout um, the country. And there's actually even a family teaching model association. There is uh, certification um, that all of these families go through uh, when they are going to uh, apply to be one of the, the families that are on a Boys Town, working with the Boys Town residents. And so it's actually much more grounded, I think, behavior analysis than people understand. And it's an incredibly powerful and highly, highly effective intervention system. Yeah. What I loved. So what you're painting, I had heard about that picture of what it looks like. And I read about in different articles and things like that. And when I showed up, I was still mesmerized at just how complete it was just a fully functioning town. Like you're saying, yeah, everything's there. Um, the there, and there, there's no locks, there's no gates. I mean, and, and again, for those of you that watch the documentary with Pat, you'll hear him say this 
you know, Boys Town in Nebraska is literally the safest place in the entire state. Um, you don't need to lock your door. There is no concern over violence because that's how effective the family teaching model and especially their level system is with the residents and people. It's just this like magical place. It really, really is. And you, it's, you feel it mm-hmm. when you're there, you feel it. And that's the goal of what we're trying to ultimately do with on location is for those that can't make the trip out there. And for companies, uh, organizations like uh, Boys Town that'll say yes and open their doors for us, share those sort of experiences. Well, and I, and I think that we get so caught up in our field uh, in terms of having conferences, which is great. I mean, obviously, this is something I'm, I'm highly involved in with a lot of different organizations. But there's also, you know, to be experiencing something on site and in situ um, and to really have this, you know, kinesthetic experience, visual experience, visceral experience is totally different. And, you know, Ryan and I were talking a lot about, you know, how do we kind of make these, you know, amazing places come to life for people so they can really contact learning opportunities in a very different way. Um, And also just because I think this is a much more compelling way to, to teach and instruct people by literally, you know, bringing them on location and having them have this like very robust experience of like, what is it like to be here versus maybe just coming in contact with Pat for a 50 minute session where you don't have the context of being actually in the boys town of being in the behavioral uh, health center of walking around and interacting with residents. So it's something that, you know, was totally out of the box for us. And we also saw that it wasn't being done anywhere else in behavior analysis. We, we don't see this. So we're like, what can we do? That's totally innovative. Which is where, so there's, the, the, you're talking about those, like the being able to show what people talk about. So like you read in an article or Pat mentions it on stage or whatnot. And that's part of what Jarek was saying he was responsible for. It's like, we need to show and mm-hmm. make people feel the emotion that comes from what these people are talking about, um, which turned out to be a whole lot of work, which we're going to get into a whole yeah. different episode of like what went into this, how it was done and things like that. Um, one other thing to, I think, cover here real quick is that, Part of this was meant to also be a this experience, but also available in like a continuing education format. Yes. Uh, so obviously, if you're a behavior analyst, you understand that you have to recertify every two years. And I believe what's the current requirement? Thirty six continuing education units. Thirty two. Thirty two. Say yeah, a lot. Let's just say that <laughs> you, you you need to have a lot. And you know the data is clear um, that typically if you attend some uh, training, whether it's you know online, whether it's uh, at a conference. How much of the you know information are you actually going to retain? I think something it's supposed to be like somewhere between like fifteen and twenty percent. Um, what I'm hoping that we're doing here by making this, I think, a more interactive uh, experience for people is a for them to retain this information um, at a, a greater rate, uh, but B to make it really interesting and something that is just engaging to them. Um, so, you know, having these uh, conversations with Pat and, and what you guys will see in the CE content is we're really talking about some of his most, um, popular articles, some of his most popular research, and, but having it in a more conversational manner, but it's all in the backdrop of Boys Town. Um, and then it's going to be, you know, kind of we'll intermingle some other footage. And you're also going to hear, for example, front of the room training, you're going to be able to watch Pat instruct his uh, psych interns in front of the room training. You're going to be able to see some of them practicing their front of the room speeches, which uh, truly, I mean, that's one of my most favorite things about going to Boys Town. I've now been able to see this twice um, to watch all of the interns that are there really talk about what made them want to be a psychologist, there is nothing that I have found more moving um, than listening to these personal stories and how vulnerable people are willing to get. And Pat does such a great job of really making, you know, the words that he writes in terms of like, get to the front of the room, stand out by actually showing um, how to do it. And and we bring that to you. And I think that's going to be really compelling for the viewers. Um, would you bring up uh, like perfectly to my next segue, which is just, we owe a ton of thanks to a bunch of different people, yep. those interns. Um, confirmed that each of them did provide uh, consent for us to be able to share those sort of things. And that, I mean, and that is no small feat because these are people that are sharing incredibly personal stories um, that I don't even know that I would feel comfortable sharing with an audience of people. I don't know, but that's how committed they are to making sure that they are authentic, to making sure that they can really connect with uh, the people that they're working with at Boys Town. And I really think that's a testament to the intern program they have at Boys Town, which is just amazing. And there's a number of other people in addition. Uh, I just want to rattle off a couple names. 
Um, so the entirety of the Boys Town behavioral health staff mm-hmm. that, that sat in on some of these, the interns, as we mentioned, uh, we had Eli Hernandez there that helped us out with the archival footage, which Jarek and I did not realize just how crucial, or at least yeah, I did. Yeah, that was so helpful. Dude. <laughs> it has been so useful in what, what it is that we're building and putting out here. Um, I could not owe Eli enough thank yous. Um, we had a couple of people. Abby Lewis helped with a little mm-hmm. bit of feedback and uh, our, your boy, Greg. Elsky. Greg Elsky, also, cameraman number three. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, when you all when you all watch this, he uh, I don't know. It's probably a quarter of the documentary was shot from his angle mm-hmm. that he was running um, for the first time ever that, holding that a I, camera. Yeah, <laughs> that I taught him within ten or fifteen minutes to get going. So yeah, big thanks to him as well, um, and of course to all you. So what the game plan here is is just a condensed season. This is not a repeated sort of thing. Mm-hmm. We have a limited number of episodes. Uh, aiming for about eight, where we're going to bring different aspects of this in together, including getting uh, some audio-only experiences of things that happened that didn't make the cut into either the content for continuing education or the documentary, um, but also some of the feedback sessions and things that we've had as well. So mm-hmm. make sure you subscribe. This is Team on Location. We don't have a sign out. Oh, we we should make one. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Do we have a sign out? What I don't know, Derek. I'm looking for you. You're, oh, you're like the most creative. Are we person just here. like saying bye? <laughs> <laughs> we out. We, we out. out. We yeah, out. We out. I guess that's it. <laughs>